Anita Layton. I'm from Duke University. I'm in the math department. So using mathematical approaches in biological system would, um, for one, forces you to think about what you're talking about. So now you need to write mathematical question that describes certain biological processes. So A, you need to understand what they're doing, or at least what you think they're doing. And B, as you write down the equations, you need to um, think very carefully about what the assumptions are. So for example, um, in cell biology, um, the interactions of proteins um, have been frequently you know, described using some very cute cartoon animation which are very easy to visualize, very cute, very interesting, easy to use as teaching tool, but they don't always describe precisely what's going on. So to do that, you might want to use ma mathematics because you know, when you quantify things you know, in a mathematical way, um, you, know, you can be more precise in what you're doing, um, you can make predictions that you can trust, and sometimes a model will predict things that you, know, you didn't expect in the first place. So another advantage, you're lost, but I'm like, only going to say to you, okay? Another advantage is that there are things that are a lot easier and very often cheaper to do in silico using a model than to actually do it in wet lab. So for example, you want to know, you know, so what happened if, um, you know, or what, what the functions are of certain transporters in a cell, okay? So to do it using a model, what do you do? Well, you go and tweak certain parameters and run the simulation and see what happens. Sometimes crashes, but luckily, you know, you get something that tells you something. Um, if you actually want to do it in a real cell or in a real animal, well, what do you do? You have to administer certain, certain drugs or you have to breed some mutant that don't express those proteins. These approaches, real approaches, are number one, very expensive, and number two, they sometimes have side effects that you didn't expect, so they tend to be messy. So these are the, you know, at least two advantages that I can talk about. So um, in my math biology work, I, um, a lot of it has to do with the kidney. So the kidney is a very complex and um, important organ. It does a lot of work for us. It um, secretes hormones, it um, gets rid of waste products, and it also maintains a balance of water and salt in your body. And that's very important because, you know, um, you know, so for example, if you take a mammal, a rat, for example, you don't give it water, okay, so it's water deprived. What a kidney would do is through a something called a urine concentrating mechanism, it will produce a urine that's very, very concentrated to try to maintain that balance in its body. Without that mechanism, um, you will not survive very long in a desert, for example. But even though it's so important, um, a lot of it, actually, actually how it actually works is not understood. Um, despite many, many years of work um, in modeling, theoretical work, and experimental work. Um, well, you may not realize that because if you open the textbook, there is a whole page of urine concentration mechanism based on something called a passive mechanism. Okay? That mechanism, passive mechanism, is taught. It is supposed to describe how a mammal produces concentrated urine. It is taught in textbook. It is taught to medical doctor. Um, it is a very elegant and beautiful mechanism that I uh, obviously don't have time to go into. But just, just a little problem, which is that it doesn't seem to work. It requires certain transfer property of structure in the kidney that seem to be inconsistent um, with what people measure. So um, recently people, not very recently, maybe uh, 20 years ago, people built a um, computer model um, that used um, transport um, numbers, values that are actually measured. Um, and lo and behold, the model kidney doesn't concentrate. Um, so because of mathematical modeling, we now think that something other than the passive mechanism is going on. Well, many, many things. So I think mathematics is most useful in the context of biology um, in explaining the mechanism be behind certain things. So biologists make their uh, exper experimental um, observation. Naturally, we, un we want to understand the mechanism behind those observations, why things happen the way you know, they happen. Without mathematical model, it is actually not very hard to come up with some mechanism, and a lot of times those mechanisms are actually believable. But it will certainly be nice to build a mathematical model that are constructed based on fundamental physics principle, and then you know, use that model to test your hypothesis. Right? So you test the hypothesis and see if it's true. 
well, you know, not all believable hypotheses are true, just like the, you know, the concentrating mechanism that I just talked about. You know, people believe it's true, it's, it sounds very believable, it's extremely elegant, but you know, once you build a model based on mass conservation, you use parameters that are consistent with what people have actually measured. You test it, see if it actually does what it's supposed to do, whether this model kidney is supposed to produce a very highly concentrated model urine. It doesn't. Then the there is something wrong with the hypothesis. Certainly, new math has come out of uh, math biology or, or through our study and interest in biological system. Um, uh, you know, frequently when we're building a model or trying to solve the equations that arise in those models, we realize that, oops, we don't have all the tools. So we will need to develop new mathematical techniques. And those techniques can be uh, analytical, they can be um, numerical or computational. So um, one example that um, comes to mind would be the free boundary um, problem. Basically, um, that those problem concerns um, the, uh, how you want to compute a solution of a system of partial differential equation um, in a certain domain where the boundary of the domain keeps changing. You don't know where the boundary is a priori. Um, so why would you have those problems? Well, if you're in, interested in, uh, for example, uh, modeling tumor growth, for example, okay, the important um, um, problem for well, the tumor grow, right? So it's grow, its boundary is changing. And you don't really know how fast it's growing because, you know, it depends on what drug you feed up to the patient or, you know, what the um, conditions are. Um, another example, wound healing. Okay, hopefully your wound is healing so the boundary is shrinking. Um, or, you know, motion of organism, for example. So because of interest in this biological problem, uh, people have been studying um, or investing their time in free boundary problem. And you know, there are new techniques that come out of um, this interest, such as the variational um, inequalities, or people have proved you know, regularity theorem concerning this boundary in certain problems. So new math, good math. <laughs>